All right, so in the last section, we built our first line in our schedule, and it contains a lot of code, and we are not wanting to clutter up our widget tree with this much code for each line in our schedule. And so what we can do is we can create a helper method to feed us all this code and only write it once. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut that existing code, I'm going to come down inside this last curly brace, so inside the home page class, but outside of the build method. I am going to create a function that returns a widget like that, and I'm going to call it schedule tile. You can call it whatever you want, and we'll open up some curly braces. I'm going to type return and I'm going to paste the code that I just cut. I'm going to add a semicolon at the end. And because I have no errors, I can save that and I can code format by hitting Alt Shift F or Option Shift F on a Mac. And now I have this nice schedule tile function. And you'll notice that my schedule has disappeared because we took all of the code completely out of the list view. But if we come back to the list view and I type in schedule tile like that and I save it, then it comes back. And in fact, if I duplicate this line, so Option or Alt Shift down, and I do that a couple of times, I can see now I'm actually getting a series of schedule items and we're building this list view and all we're doing it all with one line of code right here, just repeating this code down here that we set up in the helper function. So that's something you definitely wanna do as your code gets more verbose. You wanna extract it out of your build method and have helper methods uh, to feed you the code that is much slimmer and sleeker. Now, of course, all of these say 8.30 a.m. and welcome, and that's not a good thing. So one of the things we can do in our helper widget down here in our schedule tile is we can give it parameters that we can feed in. And so two parameters I would definitely want to feed in would be the time and the actual schedule item. So let's specify that we're going to be passing in a string that we'll call the time. And then we're going to be passing in a second string that we will call event title. And then instead of hard coding 8.30 a.m., we will take our time property and put it in the text field. And then we will take our event title and put that in the event title field. And now we're going to find up here we have errors. If we hover over schedule tile, it's going to tell us now that this requires two parameters, a string for time and a string for event title. So we can say 0830 AM welcome. Oop, that's a string. The error goes away. We can come down here. We can say 0930 AM break and we can say 940 09 a.m then that is going to be the keynote speech and if we save that we see that all playing out here on the screen so i'm gonna hit option shift or alt shift down a few more times and I'm just going to type through what I see here. So after the 9.45 keynote, next is 12 o'clock p.m. lunch. My favorite subject. And uh, 01 p.m. we are going to have breakout sessions. Two thirty PM Committee Organizations It's 
been long enough into this COVID pandemic that stuff like this is actually starting to appeal to me again. 04.30 p.m. No more Zoom. That is going to be conclusion. All right, and if we save that, we should have a scrollable schedule, although it's not quite long enough to actually be scrollable on this one. So maybe I'll add myself a couple more. Let's say five o'clock, we're gonna have uh, refreshments. And then at six o'clock, leave all right so that's enough to actually extend off my screen and i can see there's no error and i can scroll up and down to see all of it which is exactly what i want to be able to do so uh mission accomplished there there the last thing we want to do is just have this bar down here at the bottom with some icon tab type buttons and this is really no different than we did in the uh last unit Let me format that. We have our expanded widget, which ends here. And so because we have the expanded widget that is going to flex and take up the available space that is remaining, then we know we can put a container down here at the bottom. And we can specify a height of 70. And we can give that a child. Now, it seems like a row would make the most sense here. We'll just have a row of widgets, and then we'll space them so that they are spread out across the screen. So let's do a row. Let's do some children. I'm going to format by hitting Option-Shift-F or Alt-Shift-F on Windows. I'm going to save. And there's nothing in there yet, but we can see now that my list is now going behind it. So that's good. And so for our children, let's do icons. And I'm going to do, so it's an icon widget with icons. I can do this. Icons dot schedule. And so each one of these is going to want to be white. It's going to be black by default. So let's specify that we want colors white. All right, there's one. I'm going to do... Option shift down and do three more. And I put no thought into which icons are on the screen. I have a baby changing station for the second one. Put whatever you want there. And I guess the third one I did label off. And then the fourth one, I did landscape. And so there they are. They are uh, sitting on the left side of the row because that's the default. So let's give ourselves a main access alignment. And so we can do main access alignment helper widget. Hit dot. And I think space evenly would probably be our best option. So let's try that. Let's have a look. That looks pretty good. I just want to make sure that wherever my container is, is that these actually sit on top of the container. And you can see over in the iOS, that's a real issue. If they don't sit on the top, they might actually hit this... Uh, I forget what this is. Is this a speaker on iOS? Whatever's there down there on iOS, you might run into that. So I want to make sure that these sit at the top of my container. And so that's my cross access alignment. And just to illustrate that, I'm going to open up the widget inspector and put on debug paint. So you can see these are centered in the middle of that 70 pixel high container. And so I'm going to change that to start. 
and then I'm going to see they go right up to the top and that's what I would like them to do and I'm going to get rid of that debug now. Okay, and with that, we've done the job almost as promised. We did have to use one widget, that divider widget that we didn't initially learn. Um, so that was a new one. Now, with the exception of that divider widget, we've used the base widgets. However, some of these uh, widgets that we used are not actually the ideal widget to use in this scenario. So even though we're done, let's do one more section on this app. And let's introduce a couple of widgets that would actually be better stand-ins for what we used in this app. So that'll be in the next section.